1990 Buick Estate Wagon. For the man who drinks all day, but still thinks cannabis is a gateway drug. Buick, reminding me of road trips long ago. Here comes the hot stepper. I'm a lyrical gangster. Be ba bob you bob. Still love you like that. The Buick Estate Bono's motor boatin'. This is a car from the 90s. Pure balls, GM. Big, hairy, nuts in dirty dad briefs on the Wildwood, New Jersey beach. General Motors was still making this station wagon six years after the minivan craze began in 1984. The American market was tired of station wagons, so much though that in 1983, one year prior to the minivan launch in 1984, National Lampoon got fathers slapping their knees with the family truckster, an exaggeration of the fat, lurching wagons creaking around these states united. So why didn't GM get the hint? It's not like they weren't trying to get with the times. The Camaro had tuned port injection, the Grand National was a computing and turbocharging achievement, and the Corvette C4 was dodging laser pyramids in its own commercial. And still the Buick Estate Wagon from 1990. This car is a dad still dancing the Macarena in 2005. This car is for a mom snapping her fingers along to a steel drum band. This Buick is get the hence. Will somebody please tell this car what year it is? Buick Estate Wagon, the official car of liking the Beatles but only before Revolver. Estate Wagon, fueled by Reuben sandwiches at 11 a.m. and clapping along to We Will Rock You when it unfortunately pops up in the diner's Spotify mix. And upon hearing that, Buick Dad gyrates in his booth seat, slapping his farm hands on the table. Home fries bounce out of his plate. Buick Dad stomps and slaps and claps one quarter note behind Queen, crackling from overhead speakers. Now that's a real American, he beams, stabbing an index finger upward. And 21 minutes later, he's out in the parking lot, lighting his Nikes on fire. The Buick Estate Wagon is farther behind the times than the whole concept of a taxi cab. Sweet, I just flagged one down. Wait, wait, why is the meter already at 250? And why is Jimmy Fallon shouting at me on this fuzzy looking TV screen? In stock form, the Buick Estate Wagon is Knee Brace Poop Party! Knee Brace Poop, I'm sorry. Rear wheel drive with a four speed automatic and a 305 V8 engine. With power ratings of 140 horsepower at 3,200 RPM and 255 pound feet of torque at 2,000 RPM. Stop recording! Stop recording! I won't deliver! Gas mileage is uh, whatever. It's like 15 city, 22 highway, and a combined 18 miles per gallon overall. But even though this looks like a road trip car, where are you really going with this? Yellowstone is all the way over there. And you know good and damn well that you aren't strapping your suitcases to the roof and heading out west for an 11 hour performance of Dad Has an Existential Crisis, the musical. Buick Estate Wagon, sponsored by a man whose wife still believes that the love of a good woman can change him. Sorry, Monica. It's been 25 years. His skid-marked underwear are always going to miss the hamper. He's no Steve Nash. The only ball that's life to him are the two knocking around between the outbreak of heat rash on his inner thighs. Buick Estate Wagon. For the husband who's constantly tapping his finger on the steering wheel, whether it's Dexie's Midnight Runners or the Afternoon Phillies game. This is a 90s car in name only. It looks like a good seven years older than it is, like Aunt Deborah trying to get the senior discount at IHOP. There was no attempt at updating this car at all. I mean, what did GM really need to change? Sure, there were body alterations over the years to improve aerodynamics, and eventually the, the wagon offerings from GM would get rounded over by the time we reached the mid-90s, you know, with the Roadmaster and everything. But nothing would happen here because GM is not about aesthetic variations. 
within the course of one generation. They just, they don't do that. But right now this Buick Estate wagon has a 350 in it, dropped in. So horsepower, uh, I don't know, 200, 180, 205, 310, torque 250, 240, 290, take your pick. It's an SBC you later if you let it breathe, which the owner has done. Has a patriotic exhaust, all smog is gone, and this small block Chevy is breathing through the old school move of putting the air cleaner lid on upside down. SBCs throb good time feelings that produce effects faster than the first six measures of glory days. These cars were billed as practical, but everything that they could do, the minivans could do and get better mileage. I suppose the only things they had from a practical standpoint over over minivans is that you could have V8s in them. But they aren't tall, are they? Oh, you can put lumber in them. Yeah, but you can put lumber in minivans too. And everything that you put into these station wagons, you have to hurt, bend over and reach far out. Whereas minivans... You can lift up. They're better for your back. And the reason companies held on to station wagons for as long as they did is because they already had one platform and it was easy to take a sedan and turn it into a wagon. Most American manufacturers were stuck in the old school, well, you just take a sedan and you just turn it into a station wagon. Now, judged in their own era in the 70s, a car like this was perfectly acceptable. But by today's standards, it feels like something that's impossible to enjoy in any way other than ironically. Wagons are cool now, in a kind of ironic way. Yes, it would be a lot cooler if it had a manual, wouldn't it? Yes. And I guess with enough time passing, the old ways seemed good. <laughs> I mean, if Dutch Wonderland Dad were the deity of his own religion centered around mustaches, muffin tops, Father Day ties that he never wears, and road maps he's too proud to use, then the Buick Estate Wagon is that religion's creation myth. Because this car is every family vacation to a place you didn't want to go. Spending hours in the car counting other cars, or trying to work your way through a choose-your-own-adventure book without getting motion sick, while mom and dad work through the reality of getting married too young and procreating too soon, placing tinder on old arguments until the flames commit arson on the slow, patient work of the couple's therapist they've been seeing for the last six months. But he sticks it out because a man owes a responsibility to his family, he says, and she sticks it out because this is who she chose, and so she accords him a depth of character that isn't really there. Oh, well, at least he's a good father. Oh, well, at least she takes care of me. But whatever their reasons, you know they love each other, and deep down the love is real, and it'll win out at the end of the trip, and you and your siblings are huddled together with mom and dad, looking at some mundane panorama suddenly rendered extraordinary by each other's presence. Because this car is family, it might not always work like it's supposed to, and other people might have one that doesn't have as many problems, but it's yours. And if you're lucky enough to have one that feels like home, then don't dread having to take a road trip in something like this. Because anywhere you go, home is exactly where you'll be. As saccharine sweet as that sounds. But does that only exist through past glorification, I wonder? It's a 1990s car, but it still drives like 1971, leaning and diving and chirping the tires if you are on the throttle at all when the front wheels are angled. But it's comfortable. And that's why wagons like these legacy machines stuck around. Integra bros wish they could slouch like this while driving. And just like 90s Hondas, these things are starting to rust out. Bumper fillers are all gone, the fake wood sides are peeling off, but the rear window is electric and you operate it through the rear keyhole. The third seat faces backwards and there are headrests which don't protect you in a crash. They like accentuate your whiplash. And this is also the last of the Buick Estate wagons when they had their own nameplate. After this, they'd be called the Roadmasters, and they'd be based off the Caprice. But steady as she goes, steady as she goes, that's what these wagons do. You are made to sit, slouch, and steady on. Get to 65 and stay there. This is the way we do it because this is the way it's always been done. And it's fun to feel that way in a moment. It's fun to wrap yourself in this kind of thrift store nostalgia. But when you look down at that needle on the gas gauge and you can watch it move, you start thinking about the impracticality that people put up with. And what we really want is modern convenience and modern efficiency. 
But we'll have to watch these wagons and see if in the next 10 years they'll be able to run just as efficiently on irony as gasoline. Whether or not you love the Buick SD wagon Frankly you could do a million levels worse You could end up in an old Jeep Wrangler dragon Cracking whips along a horse and wagon. 